So you're learning about molecular orbital theory and how it is an improvement over valence bond theory and Lewis structures. However, molecular orbital theory has limitations of its own, and we're going to explore those limitations now. So in thinking about what the limitations of ML theory are, let's first consider what's actually going on when we do ML theory. When we do ML theory, we take atomic orbitals, and I've drawn two atomic orbitals here, these two little red circles, say they're the 1s orbitals of hydrogen. We take them together, so we know there's two total, and I dump them into this black box. What's the black box? Well, the black box is the method we use to combine these atomic orbitals into molecular orbitals. Now, you may have heard of the linear combination of atomic orbitals method, or LCAO method. This method takes a quantum mechanical view that atomic orbitals are really wave functions. Electrons represented by wave functions. And we can add or subtract and take certain fractions of these wave functions, certain fractions of these atomic orbitals, add them, subtract them to yield a molecular orbital. So we can take two atomic orbitals, put them into our LCO black box, do a little bit of arithmetic, and out the other side, we get two molecular orbitals. Two atomic orbitals in, two molecular orbitals out. So here I've got a bonding orbital and an anti-bonding orbital. However, this is important to note. While we put in atomic orbitals to get out molecular orbitals, those two molecular orbitals that we got out are really nothing more than approximations. We have approximated both their shape and their energy. If you remember on an MO diagram, we have an energy scale going on the left-hand side. And this energy scale tells us about the relative positioning of these molecular orbitals relative to one another. And we may not have calculated those exactly right using the LCAO method. An easy ana uh, analogy to look at for how we approximate these things is to zoom in on one of our calculated molecular orbitals. If we blow it up, what do we see? Well, it doesn't really look that smooth, does it? It looks kind of choppy. Like we don't have all that much resolution in our final calculated molecular orbital. And this isn't ideal. So we might ask ourselves, how do we get something that's a little better looking, something that's less choppy? Well, if we want to get something less choppy, maybe we can add more atomic orbitals to our in section to approximate better the molecular orbitals coming out. So I'm going to throw in two extra p orbitals here. Now in reality, you would get out more than two molecular orbitals doing this. We're only going to consider these two molecular orbitals because you're still going to get them. So let's put in these two extra p orbitals along with the two original s orbitals into our LCAO black box and let's see what we got on the other side. So here we are. We're zooming in again. What do we see? Well, it looks much smoother, doesn't it? This indicates that we have a better estimation of what the real molecular orbital looks like. And the energy will also be a little bit better, a little bit, a little bit closer to reality. So, let's review. There are two primary limitations of MO theory. In the first limitation, we have to recognize that MO theory is nothing more than an approximate method to estimate what molecular orbitals look like. In other words, the molecular orbitals that we calculate aren't quite reality. Our second limitation is that it gets really difficult. Beyond simple molecules like hydrogen or nitrogen, you usually need to go to a computer. Now, we have very good methods for doing this nowadays, but you can't do this by hand anymore. So that in a nutshell, the two main limitations of MO theory.